Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, this paper is about road infrastructure and enterprise development in, in Ethiopia. And it is co-authored with Mans Soderbaum and Yerusalem Siba, who are just in the other conference room presenting papers and chairing a session. And uh, Getnet Alamu from Addis Ababa University. And we would like also to acknowledge financial support for this project by the International Growth Center. So <clears throat> we have already heard from yesterday's keynote speech that uh, infrastructure is, of course, one of the critical uh, constraints for economic growth in low-income countries. So these countries have very low infrastructure capital. The quality of service is typically low. And of course, it's very expensive. And you have this combination of things which make it difficult for businesses. What's really interesting is the fact that there is some uh, heterogeneity in the impact of infrastructure when we look across sectors. So in fact, it's manufacturing which seems to suffer the most from poor uh, infrastructure in these countries. And this is because of the uh, transactions intensive nature of manufacturing because it has more backward and forward linkages per unit of value added as compared to other uh, economic activities. Uh, there are some other authors who also try to relate the firm size distribution of manufacturing with infrastructure. So the market for manufactured goods is very low in aggregate terms in uh, developing countries or uh, especially in low income countries, mm -hmm. but it's also highly fragmented into very localized markets uh, because of poor infrastructure. So the, uh, the market size, the firm size in this condition would be typically very low because they are kind of targeting very small localized markets. And when we look at this uh, description, it actually fits very well what we see in sub-Saharan Africa in the sense that the manufacturing sector is still at an incipient stage and it is typically dominated by uh, small and micro enterprises. Now, we can turn this argument around and say that if we increase investment in infrastructure, we should be able to witness some strong response from the manufacturing sector because it is the one which has been uh, suffering from uh, poor infrastructure services. And again, from yesterday's keynote speech, we have seen this increasing tendency in African countries to invest now in uh, infrastructure uh, in a very unprecedented way. Uh, but when we look at the literature, there is actually no uh, strong evidence which kind of investigates or a study which investigates the relationship between you know, the distribution and performance of manufacturing firms with uh, infrastructure services. Most of the evidence that we have actually comes from developed countries. And there is a very excellent review paper by Arozo uh, and his colleagues in 2010 summarizing this, uh, this literature. Uh, there are a few studies coming from developing countries, but almost all of them are kind of addressing issues in uh, emerging and semi-industrialized countries like you know, Brazil, China, India, and uh, <clears throat> Southeast Asian countries. So uh, we don't really have you know, systematic empirical studies on the relationship between infrastructure and manufacturing performance. Uh, in the case of Sub-Saharan Africa, there are a few studies, of course, in Africa, but they seem to be focusing again on um, the performance and outcomes for rural households like Stefan Birken on Ethiopia and Renko and his colleagues uh, on Kenyan farmers. So this is a case study on, or an empirical study using Ethiopia as a case uh, country. And um, it's, we, we're kind of excited about this because Ethiopia, uh, the situation of infrastructure in Ethiopia is typical of that, uh, what we see in Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, the country has become landlocked since the cessation of uh, Eritrea from Ethiopia in 1993. So all Ethiopian trade now goes through uh, the smaller port of Djibouti. And for all practical purposes, Ethiopia doesn't have any railway systems or water transport systems. So it is heavily dependent on road infrastructure, both for public and freight transports. Uh, and until very recently, the road networks were very, very poor. Uh, and the good thing is the Ethiopian government has made road infrastructure one of its top priorities in the last 15 years. And the government has implemented three road sector development programs during the period 1997 to 2010. 
And the total cost of this program has been about $7 billion, which was partly funded by uh, international donors, but most of it, again, coming from uh, domestic revenue sources. And this investment has already started to make a big difference, both in the quantity and quality of infrastructure in Ethiopia. This is the latest report from the Ethiopian Roads Authority showing that, for instance, the proportion of asphalt roads which are in good and serviceable condition has increased from less than 20% to more, about 75% in 2011. And the quantity of roads in terms of you know, road density per 1,000 kilometers has increased from 24 kilometers to about 50 kilometers. So a significant increase, as I said, both in terms of quantity and quality of infrastructure. So the basic question we ask in this paper is, what has been the response of manufacturing firms to this massive investment in road infrastructure by the Ethiopian government? And we have two specific questions. The first one asking, you know, what is the impact on the distribution of firms across different locations? So does you know, better road networks make towns more attractive for manufacturing firms. And the second question is, what is the impact on the startup size of manufacturing firms? We know that the industrial landscape in sub-Saharan Africa is heavily dominated by small and micro enterprises. Now we want to see what is the effect on startup size, because the keynote speaker uh, today has already indicated that if you want really to succeed in manufacturing, you need like mid-sized firms to, to be active in the manufacturing sector. So those are the two questions we would like to address. This is a preliminary evidence showing you know, the effect uh, of, well, not the effect, but as a, some evidence showing the change in the distribution of manufacturing firms in Ethiopia. So the blue line, for instance, shows you the decline in the share of the capital city, Addis Ababa, in terms of you know, manufacturing firms. It has declined from about 65% in 1996 to just about 40% in 2009. And the share of the top five towns in general has also dropped very significantly. What this means is essentially that towns which have never been very important for manufacturing now are kind of attracting manufacturing firms. And the concentration of manufacturing is kind of declining over time. So we have a very... Uh, interesting and very exciting data set, which we can brag about. Uh, we're basically combining two data sources. One of them is a GIS-based town-level panel data on uh, road accessibility. So this is uh, using geographic information system, and it is, uh, as I said, uh, town-level indicator. And we also have firm-level panel data on Ethiopian manufacturing coming from or collected by the Ethiopian Statistical Agency. This GIS data is very interesting because it starts off from geocoded project level information provided by the Ethiopian Roads Authority. So we have information not only in terms of you know, the quantity of roads, but we also have you know, the pavement type and the condition of uh, the roads themselves. So, and we use two GIS uh, analytical tools, the so-called you know, accessibility analysis, uh, which, uh, which has two parts in it, the service coverage analysis and the origin destination analysis. So instead of just simply reporting how much government has spent on road infrastructure or what is the quantity of roads, we're kind of looking into what is the impact on you know, road accessibility. So it's more of a quality indicator, if you like, uh, than simple um, crude indicators that has been used in previous studies. So based on this, uh, GIS tools, we have three indicators of road accessibility. The first one is area accessible, SEC, which is simply the total land area that can be accessed by road during a one hour travel from the uh, towns, from the center of the town. So we're just basically looking into uh, a five kilometer buffer zone on both sides of the road and looking into you know, how much uh, area you can access um, in a one hour travel. So that is one of our indicators. The other one is travel distance. Again, looking into how far you can travel in one hour, again, from the center of the city, uh, using all the roads that serve uh, a particular town. So that is the second indicator. The third one is what we call the travel time to measure economic destinations. So we have identified about 15 economic centers, uh, 10 of which are capital cities of regional states, and we have a few commercial centers. So we're basically saying, you know, 
what the physical distance, of course, to these major economic destinations is a fixed uh, factor. It doesn't change, but the travel time could change as a result of road accessibility. So those are the three uh, indicators we have. And this is the time trend of these three variables, which would be easier if I show you in this graphical form. The green line at the top shows you the decline in travel time to major economic destinations. It has been declining by about five hours per annum. Uh, the red line tells you the travel distance, so you can now travel like you know 46 kilometers more in 2009 as compared to uh, 1996. And the, the blue line shows you the area accessible, which again has increased significantly over the, the study period. So this is, for instance, one, one of the GIS tools which allows us to calculate the area accessible. So it's just using you know, buffer zone uh, analysis, which is, which is really exciting. Uh, the firm level data, as I already indicated, comes from uh, the annual census of manufacturing carried out by the Ethiopian Statistical Agency. It covers all manufacturing firms that employ at least 10 workers. So we're basically looking at formal sector manufacturing firms. Um, <clears throat> so that is, that's our database for uh, manufacturing firms and um, it has also geographic indicators, so we know in which town and in which region each firm is located. So we kind of combine these two data sources using these geographic indicators. This is our basic econometric model. On the left-hand side is the logarithm of the number of manufacturing firms, the total number of manufacturing firms. I identifies the town, T identifies time. RN is our indicator for road networks, and X is a bunch of control variables. Now, if you apply ordinary list squares to this model, the coefficients are, of course, going to be biased and inconsistent. This is simply because uh, the information which is used by government to assign road projects has a lot of overlap with the information used by manufacturing firms to choose their location. So it would be very difficult to identify whether firms are locating in that particular area because of you know, roads, or is it because you know, economic potential, which the government also uses to uh, assign road projects. So we try different estimation methods to overcome this endogeneity of road placement. The first one is using the fixed effects estimator, uh, which would be excellent if these uh, road assignment criteria by government are time invariant fixed effects. Okay, so you just difference that out, and that would be uh, one way to resolve the endogeneity problem. But the problem with this uh, with an estimator is that it doesn't capture the agglomeration, the dynamic agglomeration effect, which is quite important for manufacturing firms. Uh, so what we did was we used the uh, Blundell and Bond system GMM estimator, which kind of includes the lagged number of firms on the right-hand side of the equation, and also uses instrumental variables to resolve the endogeneity problem. So we can discuss the technicalities of this uh, this model. The other approach we used is the so-called proxy variable approach. So if we, are, we convince ourselves that you know, road assignment by the Ethiopian Road Authority is based on observable characteristics, then we can include those characteristics directly into the econometric model. So X in this model could be expanded to include the, the criteria which the Ethiopian government uses to allocate roads. So that's one way by which you can, uh, you can resolve this. So when we ask the Ethiopian Road Authority on what criteria they use to assign roads, uh, the first thing is we didn't find any publicly available information. So we really have to ask you know, the managers to tease out what exactly they do. And most of the time, they, they told us they uh, assigned 20% for economic development potential, another 20% for uh, roads that go to food surplus or cash uh, production uh, areas, basically looking into agricultural potential and connectivity of roads. Um, so the problem with this um, criteria is we don't really know how exactly they operationalize these indicators. So how do you measure economic potential? How exactly do you capture food surplus uh, production? So we have to come up with our own proxy for uh, <clears throat> the criteria which the road authority told us uh, are used to assign roads. The first one is agricultural potential. 
we identify regions or districts which have been served or included in the public safety nets program. This is a joint, uh, a donor funded um, program which is also led by the Ethiopian government, I should say, uh, to provide support for regions which are suffering from chronic food shortages. So if you are part of this PSNP, uh, you would be, of course, located in a low agricultural potential area. If you are not included in this program, then you must be either food self-sufficient or food self surplus producer. And then we also try to control for initial conditions by including the average number of firms during the period 1996 to 1998. And then we have, of course, uh, population, which is also indicated as, another, uh, as one of the indicators, and regional fixed effects. <clears throat> now to the results. So I'll first show you a simple ordinary list of squares estimates of the previous model, but averaging the total number of firms during the period 1999 to 2009. And okay, and and also for the average for the uh, road accessibility indicators as well. So this is the result. The first column shows you the coefficient on road accessibility. That is the logarithm of uh, SEC means area accessible during the period 1999 to 2009. The coefficient is very high if you don't include any control variables. Once we include. Uh, proxies for road assignment uh, criteria, the coefficient declines significantly to about 0 0.47. This essentially shows you that you really have to be very careful about uh, endogenous assignment of uh, road projects. So that's one of the lessons we learn. And of course, the coefficient of LAN N9699, that is the, number of in the initial number of manufacturing firms. It's also very significant and uh, <clears throat> positive showing you that there is, of course, some persistence in the number of uh, manufacturing firms. Uh, this is, again, the same OLS model using travel distance as uh, indicator. Then again, we see some positive and significant impact. Now, let's subject our model to a more strict estimation method. That is a panel fixed effects. So you would see that the coefficient right here uh, on SEC, land SEC is positive and significant. The same with travel distance at 0 0.348. And TTOD, travel time to, from origin to destination, has a negative coefficient, suggesting that you know, reducing travel time actually leads to an increase in the number of manufacturing firms. That's exactly what we expect to see uh, <clears throat> from this kind of analysis. So we're very confident that this thing is capturing a very uh, interesting relationship between uh, infrastructure and number of firms. And then we subject our model again using the system GMM estimator. Again, what you see is travel distance and area accessible have a positive and significant impact on the number of manufacturing firms. And travel distance has negative, but the coefficient has become less precise in this, in this, in this specification. And the lag-dependent variable, this is the lagged number of manufacturing firms, again, has positive and significant coefficients, telling you, again, the uh, agglomeration effects. But of course, the coefficient is less than one, which means uh, places which have never been important for manufacturing before mm -hmm. are now uh, experiencing a faster increase in the number of firms. Now, the previous three results basically tell you the net change in the number of firms, which is, of course, the result of entry and exit. So what we want to do now is focus entirely on the total number of entrants. So that's gross entry. And this is usually a very small number. Usually, the average number of entrants is about three. And uh, most towns actually have, or a large proportion of towns have, zero number of entrants. So usually, you would use. Uh, what we call count data models, the Poisson model. But you have to kind of uh, take into account the fact that most towns have zero entrance. So we used what we call zero inflated negative binomial model. And the results shows, again, a very positive and statistically significant effect of road accessibility. 
uh, both in terms of you know, area accessible and travel distance, but we don't see any significant impact on the total number of firms as a result of you know, reducing travel time to major economic destinations. Uh, the last specification or the last research question we have is the effect of uh, road infrastructure on startup size. So the dependent variable in this case is the size in terms of number of workers of a startup firm K in town I at time T as a function of road networks and a bunch of uh, control variables. And the results are what you see here, a positive and significant impact when we look into area accessible and travel distance. Uh, and of course, reducing uh, travel time to major economic destinations also increases the startup size of manufacturing firms, which is really, really very interesting. And these two variables right here in terms of you know, the logarithm of district level population also has a positive and significant impact, showing you that uh, demand plays uh, a very important role. Uh, this specification includes the initial number of firms as one of the control variables. And you can see that although the initial number of firms has a positive and significant association with the total number of firms, the startup size is actually lower uh, if you locate in, um, you know, in dense or highly in, uh, intensive activities, uh, towns with intensive uh, manufacturing activities. So it's an indication of the intensity of competition if you locate yourself in major uh, centers of manufacturing. And then we used the two-stage list of squares uh, estimator. I'm done, thank you. Uh, this is you know, just to take into account the endogeneity of road placement again. Our instrument in this case is road density in 1990 as instrument for road networks after 1999. So this should affect firm entry, the size of uh, entrance through road networks, but not directly, okay? So this is because uh, it's an individual entrepreneur's decision, so it doesn't have to do with uh, <clears throat> the endogeneity issue. So we have seen that the road sector development pro uh, program has made a significant improvement in the quality and quantity of road networks in Ethiopia. Uh, and of course, the number of manufacturing firms has increased uh, during the sample period, but we see significant difference across towns uh, in the sense that towns which have never been important for manufacturing purposes have now uh, become attractive for investors because they are now well connected with uh, the country's road networks. Now, historical centers of manufacturing still are very competitive and attractive for manufacturing firms. So as a result of what we have seen, the concentration, the geographic concentration of manufacturing has, has started to, to, to decline. So this is very important. And of course, the startup size uh, is higher in, uh, for firms which locate in towns with better road uh, networks. I'll leave it there, and thank you. For thank you. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. um, Admasi. Yeah. Thanks.